How can I live above average? God never intended for you to live a mediocre, average life. You are designed for excellence, and you were uniquely created. Instead of being one in a million, you are actually one in about six billion. Yet there's nobody else exactly like you. You are unique. Everybody wants to be recognized. In fact, not only do you want to be recognized, but you need recognition for the sake of your own emotional health and image. When my daughter Amy was very young, she would say to me, Watch me, Daddy. Watch me, Daddy. She wanted to be recognized. She wanted to stand out from the crowd. We, as adults, do the same thing, except we don't do it as blatantly. We do it with our cars and our clothing and our homes. All the time we're saying, Watch me, everybody. Look at me. Most of us have a need in our lives to be different, to be excellent, and to stand out from everybody else. First Chronicles 4, 9 and 10 tell us about a man named Jabez. The first nine chapters of this book consist of genealogies with a listing of more than 600 names. Right in the middle of all these names, God singles out one man for special recognition, and his name is Jabez. There are only two verses in the entire Bible on this man, yet he is given an honorable mention above 600 other people. Why did God single out this man? What did he do that caused his name to be preserved for over 4,000 years? What made him above average? The Bible in verse 9 says, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez sounds like the Hebrew word for pain. In verse 10, Jabez prayed to God, O oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me, and keep me from harm, so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. There were three secrets to this man's life, revealing three principles that can make your life above average, too. The first secret is that Jabez had a great ambition. While all his friends were content with being average and mediocre, that wasn't enough for Jabez. He said, I want God to bless me. I want something big. I want to do something significant with my life. He didn't want to be ordinary. He didn't want to be common. He wanted to expand and grow. He said, God bless me and enlarge my land. Jabez had a great ambition, and most of all, he deeply wanted God's blessing on his life. Many people today just drift through life. They have no goals, no master plan, no overall purpose, and no ambition. As a result, they never accomplish very much. They simply exist. The first principle of living above average is that you need a great ambition. You need a dream. If you don't have a dream you are drifting. When you stop dreaming, you lose direction. When you stop setting goals, you stop growing. You must have something that you're pushing toward, a goal of excellence. As long as your horizon is expanding, you will be an emotionally healthy human being. God made you for growth. He wants you to stretch and develop and dream. God has a purpose for your life, and your key to success is to discover that purpose and cooperate with it. God never intended for you to go through life with a half-hearted attitude, wondering what you're doing and where you're going. God wants you to have a great ambition in life. A life with no challenges and no goals can be summed up in one word, boring. Three common misconceptions can keep us from having great ambitions. The first misconception is that we confuse humility with fear. We tend to say, oh, I could never do that, and we think we're being humble. But that's not humility. That is fear. That is a lack of faith. A truly humble person would say, with God's help, I can do it. With God's blessing, I will do it. I may not be able to do it on my own, but with God's help, I will do it. That's real humility. Second, we tend to confuse contentment with laziness. It's true that Paul said in Philippians 4.11, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. 
But this doesn't mean that you shouldn't set any goals. Paul was not saying, I've learned to not set any goals and I don't have any ambitions or any future desires. He was saying that even though his goals may not have been reached, he has learned to enjoy every day to the fullest. He was saying, I'm happy today, even though I have dreams and ambitions that haven't been fulfilled yet. If contentment were used as an excuse for laziness, who would ever feed the poor or do something about world hunger and equality and justice? How would anyone ever get an education? A third-grade kid would say, I've learned to be content with a third grade, and he wouldn't go any farther. We must not confuse contentment with laziness. Third, we confuse small thinking with spirituality. People have said to me, I serve God in my little way. My reply is, well, why don't you start serving Him in a bigger way? Let God use you more. Other people say, well, I'm just the way I am. That's the way God made me. But it is wrong to blame God for our lack of growth because He has provided all the tools and ideas that we need in order to grow. Don't confuse small thinking with spirituality. A second principle for living above average is you need a growing faith. Not only did Jabez have a great ambition, but he also had a growing faith. He had a deep trust and belief in God. He had enough faith to pray and expect an answer. He was like the pioneer missionary William Carey who said, Attempt great things for God. Expect great things from God. The Bible gives us some interesting facts about Jabez. First, there is no mention of Jabez having any special ability or talent or gift. The Bible doesn't say that he was wealthy or educated. He was simply a common man with an uncommon faith. Don't worry about what else you don't have if you do have faith. God will give you the necessary power. God loves to use ordinary people who believe in Him, who are willing to trust Him, and see them succeed. Jabez's faith caused him to believe that God would help him with his goals and his dreams. There is something more important than being talented, more important than ability or education. It's faith. It's believing that God will work through you. I've met many super-talented people who are sitting on the sidelines while ordinary people with faith are making the touchdowns. They believe God, so he uses them. Like Jabez, they are just Ordinary people with extraordinary faith. The second fact about Jabez is that he apparently had some type of handicap or disability. In the Hebrew language, Jabez means painful. How would you like to be named painful? Here comes painful, or there's old painful over there. Jabez caused his mother so much grief during childbirth that she named him painful. He may have been unwanted and unloved. His name constantly reminded him that even his birth caused grief in someone else's life. But Jabez was stronger than this handicap. His faith kept him going. Regardless of his past painful experiences, Jabez had the faith to look ahead and attempt great things in the future. What's your handicap? Is it physical? Is it spiritual? Is it an unhappy childhood? Is it a frustrating job or a broken marriage? Whatever it may be, God tells us in Mark 9.23, everything is possible for him who believes. The third secret to Jabez's life was his prayer life. It was Jabez's simple prayer request that got him an honorable mention in the Bible. Lots of people pray without rising above average, and maybe you're one of them. Maybe you have hesitated to ask for things in prayer. Maybe you have felt your request was selfish. What kind of prayer does God answer? The life of Jabez illustrates three things we can ask God for and expect Him to answer. The first thing Jabez prayed for was God's power in his life. He asked for a power greater than his own to accomplish his dream. He prayed, I want you to bless me. I want your power in my life. It is important that Jabez's request was most specific. God, this is what I want you to do. I want you to enlarge my coast. I want you to expand my territory. I want more real estate. 
Do you pray about your goals? Do you ask God to help you wherever you're headed in your life? The third principle for living above average is you need a genuine prayer life. At first glance, Jabez's prayer seems selfish, doesn't it? He prayed, God, I want you to do all these things for me. But evidently, God approved of the prayer because he answered it. Here's the point. Ambition is neither good nor bad. It's just a basic drive in life. Everyone has some ambition. It may be great or small, but everybody has some ambition in life. Maybe your ambition is just to get up in the morning, but you have to have some ambition to live in the world. What makes ambition good or bad? One thing, the motive behind it. And Jabez's motives were genuine because God never honors an unworthy request. Consider this. God dares you to ask for big requests. What do you ask God for when you pray? God encourages you to ask for things. In James 4, 2, he says, You do not have because you do not ask God. The Lord says to Jeremiah, as in Jeremiah 33, 3, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Paul says in Ephesians 3, 20, that God is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. This means that you cannot out-ask God. You cannot out-dream God. If you could stretch your imagination to the greatest limits of what you think could possibly happen, God can go beyond even that. He can go beyond your imagination. God says, trust me, ask things, find a great ambition, then get a growing faith, and then bring them to me in genuine prayer. What do you want God to do in your life? Heal a bad marriage situation? Ask Him. Help you with a problem at work? Ask Him. Help you fill a bigger niche in your church? Ask Him. God is not some big policeman up in the sky waiting for you to make one wrong move so He can pounce on you. He wants to bless your life. The second thing Jabez prayed for was God's presence in his life. In 1 Chronicle 4.10, it reads, Let your hand be with me. Jabez realized that if he got more territory, it meant he would have more responsibility. He would have greater demands and more pressure, and he would really need God's help in his life. So, he requested God to be with him. When you ask for God's presence in your life, you can be sure he will answer. The third thing Jabez prayed for was God's protection over his life. In verse 10, Keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. Jabez asked God for his protection. Why did he do that? Because in those days, the more land you had, the more influence you had, and the better known you were, and a bigger target. It's still like that today. The more successful you are, the more critics you have. The more territory you own, the more enemies will attack you. The closer you grow to the Lord, the stronger you become as a Christian, the more the devil will harass you, because he doesn't want you to grow. But you can be sure, as Jabez was, that with God's protection, you don't have to fear anyone or anything. If you combine the three requests that Jabez prayed for, I guarantee that you will live above average. Do you want to break out of mediocrity? Do you want to see God work in your life? Do you want to see real answers to your prayers? Are you tired of drifting through life not knowing where you're going? If you really want to live above average, if you want God's best for your life, then follow these three principles that Jabez used. Get a great ambition, a glimpse of what God wants to do in your life. Get a growing faith in God a faith that enables you to expect the impossible. Establish a genuine prayer life, one that depends on God as you work toward your dream.